Uh, what's a place easy to enter but hard to exit? New Jersey. The only place in the universe that's free to enter but you have to pay to leave. A cult. Oh yeah. <laughs> Fucking mirror maze. Been here for three years now. Hey, I'm sorry buddy. Hope you can get out of there soon. Oh well. Well, well, well. Toxic relationship. Oh yeah. We all, we've all been there. <laughs> My friend got stuck at a strip club because he was drunk. The place was too dark and he couldn't find the exit. Warm shower on a winter morning. Oh yeah. Tell me about it. Hello everybody. Welcome back to Ask MK. My name is Mason. We got a big old set of posters. To go through. So let's do it. What sounds like fiction, but is actually a real historical event. Uh, Star Wars, right? That, that was real. When King Edward I was young, before he was king, he was a prisoner of Simon de Montfort during a civil war. During his captivity, he asked to ride the horses to the castle where he was being held. He proceeded to ride them one by one, tiring them all out. When it came to the last horse he mounted, bade his captors farewell, and rode away. All of the other horses were too tired to give effective chase. The return of Napoleon. An army was sent to intercept him, and they ended up fighting for him. If it were shown in a movie, most people would have considered it cheesy and unrealistic. The Great Stink of London in 1858. One summer, the heat dried up the River Thames, where all the human waste went, and an unbearable smell pervaded through the entire city. All Parliament representatives were eventually coerced out of their homes outside of London to convene and solve the issue. Much to the citizens' glee, Parliament was held in their building on the bank of the River Thames, Thames, resulting in one of the fastest Parliament decisions ever made to reform the London sewer system. Vesna Vulovic fell from a height of 10,160 meters, and and live. She holds the world record for surviving the highest fall without a parachute. Simo Heia, sure, we'll go with that. Simo Heia during the Winter Wars. Dude was straight out of a modern FPS game. He had 505 confirmed kills. So that's just the number they can prove. And maybe even more than that, he became known as the White Death since he'd wait in the snow for hours at a time and Russian soldiers would just get shot out of nowhere. The man was absolutely insane. The London Beer Flood of 1814. When one vat of beer at Mew & Co. Brewery exploded, it proceeded to cause a domino effect of other vats to also burst, causing a tidal wave that flooded a neighborhood, leaving crumbled homes in its path as well as eight people dead and dozens injured. Just drink the beer. Sky Pirates. During World War I, German Zeppelins would board and search foreign ships, and the boarding party of the L-23 once captured the Norwegian three-mastered cargo schooner Royale by bluffing the crew with a flare gun after they accidentally dropped their machine gun into the sea while lowering from their airship. Some guy in Australia decided he wanted to hunt rabbits, but rabbits don't live in Australia, so then he released like 12 in his backyard, and now there's a f ton of rabbits in Australia. Jack, a baboon who was employed to change rail signals. After initial skepticism, the railway decided to officially employ Jack once his job competency was verified. The baboon was paid 20 cents a day and had a half bottle of beer each week. It is widely reported that in his nine years of employment with the railroad, Jack never made a mistake. What's the cruelest prank you've ever seen? 20 years ago, a friend of mine was prank kidnapped on Halloween, driven to a cornfield and left tied up and blindfolded for an hour was not funny. Friends that did this actually got some time in prison. One of the guys on my high school track team was pantsed directly in front of the girls from the team. He wasn't wearing underwear. The person who pantsed him was one of his close friends. A girl wrote an elaborate letter pretending to be another girl in class and handed it to me. I was shocked to receive my first love letter and it felt like garbage when I found out it was fake. Hey, get out there again, buddy. Plenty of fish in the sea. A group of five boys decided to throw rocks from an overpass at the cars below and one of the rocks ended up going through a car windshield and killed the driver. Boys got charged with second degree murder. A friend of a friend in high school had her boyfriend pretend that he died. What? Really? Okay. He had one of his friends call her saying that he died in a car accident and had someone else calling up pretending to be a doctor from the hospital. She was hysterical. Later that day, after she kept asking the fake doctor which hospital it was so she could be there, she found out it was all a prank to see if she cared. Horrible. Anyway, they broke up. To this day, it's the nastiest prank I've ever seen in person. I remember seeing a video where they switched the pregnancy test to a fake positive on one of their friends struggling with infertility. F***ed up. Someone asked a guy to be her boyfriend. He said yes, and the next day she invited all her friends to tell him that she did it as a joke. That's so f***. That'll do so much to your self-esteem. Your best friend is faking being asleep and you need them up. What do you say out loud to trick them into waking up? He's finally asleep. You can come out now. Whisper just loud enough. Oh sh**. They're here. Look, there's a huge spider on his collar. That would get me up. Oh my god, I hate spiders. Not saying anything. Hope he's ready for a very, <laughs> very aggressive cuddling though. Me and the homies. It's me and Zach and Robin. We're cuddling all the time. And Brandon too. Play the pub theme really loud. Oh yeah. You hungry, bro? Will 100% work. Work on me. Change ringtone so it appears to be ringing. Yeah. Yeah, man. He's asleep. I'm filling the tub with ice now. Bring the cooler and the propofol. What's something that people turn into their whole personality? Conspiracy theories. Disliking something. Met someone the other day who hates avocados so damn much. Every conversation they'd have would come back to how different they were from people because they hated avocados. I want to say memes, but that just makes me sad about myself. Hey, don't worry, buddy. Me too. My Texas high school had a British club. I'm actually a British citizen, so 
so I tried to join. These people were nuts. They made Doctor Who and Sherlock their whole personalities. That's gross. <laughs> the generation they're born in. Dance moms. Sports parent. Astrology. The only full moon presiding over me is my own bear ass. Stocks. Trading. Investments. This isn't Boiler Room or Wolf of Wall Street. You don't need to convince me to get into trading as we talk over a food service counter. Their music tastes. I am very much guilty of this. After you die, you have to choose a single spot on Earth where your spirit will be locked in a place and forced to observe for the next one million years. That's a long time. What's the most interesting location you choose? Red Rocks Amphitheater. Hey, I, I've been there. Colorado, that's, that's in Colorado. While humans are alive, it'll be glorious and it'll be beautiful after too. Yeah, I get to see a lot of cool concerts and stuff. The Yellowstone Caldera. Might as well watch a super volcano erupt. Oxford University. It would be a bit like haunting Hogwarts. Plus, plenty of interesting people have gone there. Might be some cool ghosts to hang out with. It survived this long, so probably would survive for several more centuries. Antarctica, so I can get some fucking sleep. Amen. My room. Bottom of the ocean, assuming I'd be able to see since I'm a spirit, it'd be cool to finally know what the fuck is going down there. Gas station bathroom? My guy. My man. Nar. Absolutely not. Gas station bathroom. What innocent item gets suspicious if you own too much of it? Uh, dog cages. Oh no. Drain cleaner. Pictures of a person. Pictures of my dog count? Cash. If you have too much cash, it's automatically an assumption that you trap drugs in some way. Cough syrup. I love lean. Duct tape. I saw what I would describe as a suspicious amount of peanut butter in the bed of a truck once. I think two or three 12 pack cases. I would say scissors, but that would be self incriminating. So single socks. Not Americans who have been to the US. What is the weirdest thing about America that Americans don't realize is weird? How your medical ads show an old guy living life well because of X drug. He has the best time. The wife is having the best time. And it's all because of the drug make things better. The end of the ad is full of warnings about how this happy drug can potentially kill you, your family, nuke your dog, and make your cats impotent. When we were flying between cities, I found it weird to look out the side of the plane and see towns mid-flight. In Australia, once you leave the city's airspace, the landscape is completely barren until you arrive at your destination. That's because Australia is literally desert town. Like, there's nothing there. I went to SeaWorld with my mom when I was in my mid-teens. Halfway through the show, the performer, not the whale, asked everybody in the military to stand up and the whole crowd gave them a round of applause. They sat back down and the show continued as if nothing had happened. Couldn't imagine anything similar happening back in Blighty. Not seeing toilet brushes in hotels. I know, I know, room service and stuff. But is my family expected to look at my skid marks meanwhile? That poison ivy not only exists, but is so ubiquitous. On behalf of my wife, what's up the gaps in the toilet stall doors and no bidet? We need to uh, normalize days in America, absolutely. Why you guys don't put the actual full prices on food menus? I mean, we do, unless you go to like a fucking fancy restaurant, just doesn't show the tax or anything. Ranch, it is somehow both delicious and revolting and changes with every mouthful. If you like ranch, I don't trust you. Um, if you dip pizza in ranch, you are the worst. Americans are super friendly to the point that I, Australian, thought it was sarcasm or fake. What song has an upbeat tune but dark lyrics? The Macarena. Here's a nice happy song for little kids to dance to. Fully translated, the song's about a girl cheating on her army concert boyfriend with his two best friends while he's away. Electric Avenue. It's about a riot. 9 to 5 by Dolly Parton. Oh yeah. Everybody wants to rule the world. Song about how we all kind of get born into this dystopian machine. I love this song. This song is very good. MGMT's library is full of these suckers. E.g. When You Die It's Working. Smile by Lily Allen. No Rain by Blind Melon. I feel like Semi-Charmed Life is the end-all be-all of seemingly upbeat songs that are super dark. My personal favorite is My Ordinary Life by The Living Tombstone. Very good. Very good upbeat, but the words are very sad. <laughs> Men of Reddit. What do women do that they think is okay, but it's actually really creepy? Always asking if I got flirted with, no matter where I go. Did anyone flirt with you? What the hell? It's flag football. Who would flirt with me at flag football? Tickling and getting pissed when I don't like it. Girl, I don't like getting tickled. I really hate it. I don't care that it's some way to show affection. I don't want it. And for fuck's sake, it's not my problem and I don't have to man up and take it. Wife bragged to friends about our sex life. We live in a small town and now it feels like everywhere I go, I'm being giggled and smiled at. It's really violating. I don't know if it's just me, but the baby voice plus behavior really puts me off. You know what you don't like men doing? You don't get to do that either. Not exclusively a woman thing, but my ex would screenshot our text conversations and send them to her family and friends for reaction. Like mundane conversations, not even anything interesting. It felt like a very creepy violation of my privacy. Also, she was an idiot. Hope you see this, Laura. Yeah, Laura, f*** you. Oops. You have to install this GPS tracking app on your phone so I know where you are anytime I want to check. Yeah, no, if, if my partner did that to me, it'd be over town. Absolutely not. That's so weird. Asking password to social accounts or phone. What life-altering thing should every human ideally get to experience at least once in their life? Go somewhere isolated enough at night that you can see a full skyscape, including the band of the Milky Way. Spending a day alone with no plans, completely at liberty in a foreign city you've never been to before. Being the person in a 
room that everyone else looks up to, whether it be as a teacher or anything else. Just knowing I could make a difference in some kid's life was the best part of coaching tennis for me. Being debt free. I was so close to being debt free this year and then I had to buy a car and now I have, and then my bank account got hacked. Now I have so much debt again. It's so sad. Scuba diving. I promise you it's a completely different world down there and it's not ours. You'll be amazed and maybe even get an understanding and a greater connection to our earth and all the living things on this chunk of a rock floating through space. Feeling of having mastered something. Piano. Poetry. Writing. Some video game. Coding. Anything really. There's a special self-knowledge that comes from having mastered something that everyone really needs to know. Being utterly lost or similar in a hopeless situation and getting yourself out of it with persistence and endurance. What's something that you've never learned to do? Hold the light just right for my dad. I really want to understand how electricity works. Like volts and amps and currents and watts and all that stuff. I've read and watched videos but it just doesn't click for me. Going to sleep at a reasonable time. Been like this since I was a teen and don't see it changing anytime soon. Skate on ice. Which may be my only disqualification to become Prime Minister of Canada. Tie a tie. I'm 32 and I've worn a tie about five times in my life and I have Google it every time. Moderation and self-control. Learn a new language. I've tried multiple times in ways but can't seem to stick with it and it sucks because I would love to be able to speak fluently in a second language. Swim underwater without holding my nose. I wish I could but I just haven't really been able to get the hang of it. Talk to people without them talking to me first. I always end up feeling left out on stuff. What is a subtle sign that someone is really intelligent? Uh, they subscribe to Ask MK. That's my telltale sign. ITT. People who don't understand the difference between intelligence and social skills. They draw wisdom from multiple sources. Wait, but that might be more wise than intelligent. But I guess those two tend to be seen together a lot. They can switch up the way they talk to match the person they're talking to without sounding condescending. They listen to how others learn and explain it in that person's language of understanding. They are curious about everything. To be intelligent, you need to be knowledgeable. And you can't be knowledgeable if you are never curious. When they explain something, they make you feel intelligent. They know when their knowledge ends and say something to the extent of, I don't know and anything else I say on this topic is ignorant speculation. What's the worst coworker you've ever worked with? My coworker likes to initiate conversations, then does long pauses where you go to say something back, then he cuts you off and keeps talking. He has his entire conversations almost entirely by himself. He also likes to make changes to my paperwork before it's turned in. Ends up riddled with spelling mistakes while he tries to make the content look smarter. Fortunately, it's all electronically stamped with who made revisions. Worked with a girl who would sometimes just lay on the floor and play on her phone. She would routinely flip out about something her boyfriend did and just start screaming curse words. Sometimes in front of customers. She was eventually fired for smoking weed while on the clock. All right. I had a manager once who dumped trash on my desk my third day there. She said it was to remind me that taking out the trash was part of my job description. It wasn't. I was a research assistant at a mortgage firm. Fast food. Third shift. The only other employee stained in the bathroom doing blow. Not necessarily a co-worker, but my old supervisor literally told me not to think, even if it's wrong that I do things her way, and not to ask questions because I should already know what to do. I had just gotten the position. This guy named Daniel I used to work with at McDonald's in high school. He let everyone know he worked out and enjoyed being on the football team. He had this thing about taking five <laughs> a day. He would walk by on his way back from the toilet, chest out, shoulders back, and triumphantly announce that <laughs> number three. <laughs> Fucking Daniel. Doctors have read it. What is something that you wish everyone knew about their body? Tell us what drugs and alcohol you're on. We aren't going to tell the cops. We aren't going to lecture you. Ejaculating blood happens to most people at least once in their lives, and in 99% of cases, it resolves without taking any action within a week. Doesn't even warrant a doctor visit. Peeing blood for both sexes is a serious medical emergency and you should immediately go to the AR. People think that it's the other way around. Don't do DIY surgery or hold off on reporting things that are obvious warning signs. Don't be the guy who tried to remove his skin cancer with a knife. You need some kind of exercise. Doesn't matter how you feel right now. Sitting for 12 to 16 hours a day will have negative consequences. Ooh, calling me out for sure. I'm a vet, but I'm sure some doctors will have come across this too. Amputated limbs do not grow back. I've had far too many people asking how long it will take for their pet's amputated limb to grow back. So I'm assuming a few doctors out there will have patients asking the same thing for their own missing limbs. What is one thing you will never, ever do? The box that my pizza came in. Coward. Combine frog and dinosaur DNA to create a theme park. Oh, is this just gonna be haha -ha XD random? Oh, I'm so excited. Let's do this. Imagine the audience is naked while giving a presentation. My brain power is trying to keep the words going. I don't have cells on the side for that kind of imagination. Download a car. Purposely break a Lego set. Become the NBA's shortest professional basketball player. Sad crying emoji. Fight side by side with an elf. What's a let that sink in? Fun fact. The United States hasn't minted any new Purple Heart medal since World War II. We've been using the stockpile that was paired in anticipation of a ground invasion of Japan. We can't prove we aren't in a simulation. Since its discovery in 1930, Pluto has not yet made a full orbit of the sun. The sinking of the Titanic was a miracle to the lobsters in the galley. About 40% of the world's food is wasted, and a lot of that is before it even hits the shelves. Probably too late for this to be seen, but if you take into account the fact that on average people sleep, or should sleep, eight hours a day, if to when you get 99 years of age, you will have only been awake for 66 years.
years? Have you spent 33 years of your life sleeping? That's why I'm always up late. There is on average a supernova explosion every 50 years in the Milky Way. On average, there are 30 every second in the observable universe. What's that can't stop laughing moment when you're in a situation you shouldn't be laughing? Back in 2004, I was at my cousin's funeral and my aunt was in such a shocked state, she couldn't stop laughing. She was known to do this at funerals. Because laughing is contagious, I also started laughing a little bit and I had to go up to the back of the church into the bathroom to get it out of me. I was at church for my grandfather's fifth year death anniversary and the guy singing was so bad my grandma and me were almost died from laughter. I heard a, okay. I heard a kid fart in church during a wedding. I had to remove myself because I couldn't get it under control. It was one of those loud echo of the old wooden pew farts. Not me, but my friend. She was getting fired from her job and all she could think about was, what'll it be fellas? Mustard or ketchup from the Spongebob movie. My granddad had, if you don't know me by now, played as the curtains closed at his funeral. Sh shouldn't have laughed. Couldn't help it. Legend. I don't know why it happens, but when the teacher asked me to stand up in my desk, I explode with laughter. At a funeral, there was a slushy machine and my cousins and I wrecked havoc on that thing. Ended up having one of those moments where everything is funny and you can't stop laughing. Who, who brings a slushy machine to a funeral? What is something that everyone should experience at least once in their lifetime? A concert at Red Rocks Amphitheater. There we go again. Go if you if you can. Go. Red Rocks is insane. Hiking or camping overnight. No thanks. I had night terrors last time I went camping. The joy and freedom of quitting a job on your terms. A best friend. Tell someone that you love them and have them look genuinely happy back at you. Sing yourself in the best shape of your life. Sing your favorite band live, hearing everyone sing along and have that shared experience with strangers, feeling the music in your bones as it plays. Total solar eclipse. It is one of the most awe-inspiring sights of our solar system has to offer. After being directly in the line of totality in North America in 2017, I'm completely hooked now. Next one locally in 2024. People who snooze their morning alarm more than once every single morning. Why not just set a later alarm? I do this. My first alarm is set for 7 and almost always I'll set another alarm for 7.45. <laughs> the multiple alarms bring me out of my coma in stages. I always set two alarms. The first is to jolt me out of a deep sleep. The second is to feel like I'm getting a bit more sleep and it's easier for me to get up on the second alarm. I hate, hate getting out of bed on the first alarm on days I don't want to get up. It's too jarring for me. If it's somewhere I want to go, no problem. Work? I need two alarms. Sometimes I have crazy dreams in that seven minute window because there's a time in theory I'd like to get up and last night's version of me is convinced this time I will definitely get up because I like to have a warning bell so I can wake up slowly and enjoy my bed. I like waking up knowing I don't have to get up right away. The illusion of extra sleep is stupidly satisfying. The closest orange object is the cause of your death. How do you die? Pokemon plushie behind me and my setup. That's orange. Okay, so I die via that. Death by Tic Tac. What an awful way to go. I guess I choked to death on an earplug. Bag of Cheetos. I guess I could choke on them. That's one way to go, I guess. Everyone's choking today. What the hell? My cat. I knew they hated me. Paper folder. Death by a thousand paper cuts. I'm literally standing next to an orange shipping container. FML. My little toy alpaca comes alive and throws its decorative pom-poms at me, which are surprisingly deadly. A sudden allergy from the blouse I'm wearing right now. What's the biggest red flag when meeting new people? One of my bosses once told me that whenever you start a new job or position, it's usually the first person who tries really hard to be your friend is the problem child of the office. They'll usually start telling you of people to avoid as well. I found this very, very useful. When you mention something you enjoy and they immediately put it down. I enjoy going on photography walks around the cities. That sounds really sh**. Oh, okay, well, get lost, Mr. Stranger. They don't listen to what you say and respond accordingly. They only wait for you to stop talking so they can talk about whatever they want to talk about. Belittling their significant other in front of people but insisting it's a joke. Every time. Sadly in this situation, I used to be the belittled significant other. When you barely know them and they act like your best friend. Then later ask to borrow money. Oh boy. When they only talk about themselves. When they start talking about tons of money I am going to be making with their new business venture and selling knives door to door. What's the dumbest sh** that never ceases to make you laugh? In poor taste, there was a fake Stevie Wonder Twitter account where all the tweets were just random assortments of letters and numbers. No, no. Oh my God, it's so funny. None pizza with left beef. There's a jacked up Jeep in my town that has a sticker on the back that says booby bouncer. <laughs> Driver is about a 350 pound fat guy. Cracks me up every time I see him. My friend got his fist stuck in his mouth at school when we were 10, When I had, where I had to try and pry it out for him. Even though it's 16 years later, I always laugh when it randomly pops back into my head. That one clip where someone changed the song photograph from Nickelback, so it just says, Look at this graph. The video of the news of a pig named Chris P. Bacon, where the news reporter starts to laugh incontrollably. In Boston, Massachusetts, there's a train stop named Andrew, so every time you approach it, the automated announcer says, Entering Andrew. Smiling, thinking about it now. What terrible product sells by the millions? 
crappy pencils. They're cheaper, so it's what all the parents buy at back to school time, but they're so bad. Anything you see on the 1am advertising shows that take one hour to show you a single product. They're also sold on like Walmart shelves in the as seen on TV section. Any product where marketing is 95% of the production budget. Pay to win games. Never again. I will only buy cosmetics. Wildly overpriced microtransactions in video games. It's genuinely absurd. $25 for a little outfit for your character in a first person shooter where you do not see your little outfit is a perfect example. The only game nowadays I spend money on is Pokemon Go. So I'd say that's fair. Stuff with micro beads. Seriously, how is this ever legal in the first place and why is it still legal? There's an old IT joke about being in a room with three truly despicable people in a printer and a gun, two bullets. Who would you shoot? The answer for IT people is you would shoot the printer twice. What tasty food would be disgusting if eaten over rice? Mentos. Cereal. Some cereal is just rice. Have you ever seen how cocoa pebbles are made? It's just rice that gets blown up. Jelly beans. Beer? Beer. Even when that beer is coconut curry, Hafenweizen, and it seems like it would taste good over rice, it definitely does not. Not that I would know or anything. Ice. Rice is amazing with almost anything else. Orange juice. Jello. You ever had rice pudding? Do you mean distrusting or disgusting? I need to know to answer the question properly. What is the best movie quote you have ever heard? I'm having an old friend for dinner in a thick Gloucester, Gloucester accent. No luck catching them killers then. It's just the one killer actually. No time for love, Dr. Jones. I'm about to do to you what Limp Biscuit did to music in the late 90s. Biscuit's not that bad, right? In response to, well, sir, you are a cowardly son of a bitch. You just shot an unarmed man. Well, he should have armed himself if he's going to decorate his saloon with my friend. I love rumors. Facts can be so misleading. Where rumors, true or false, are often revealing. Christopher Waltz. It's too bad she won't live. Then again, who does? So many good ones from Blade Runner. People who were made to choose between your pet or your partner. How did your ex react when you chose your pet? I wouldn't pick my partner over my beautiful dog Jojo any day. Doesn't matter how nice the partner is. This was a long time ago, but I just started dating this person and I was told that they hated my dog. It was a bit of a shock, but it was like no biggie. Just get to know my dog and you'll fall in love with him. So next time we had a doggy date and he tried to kick my dog. I literally grabbed my dog and turned around and walked away. And that was that. This is my favorite story where I worked in a shelter. A guy came in to surrender his cat, the reason that his girlfriend didn't like her. He starts filling out paperwork, but partway through, he just stops and says, screw this. I'm just gonna break up with her instead. He picks up the cat and walks out the door, presumably to leave his girlfriend. I hope he stuck to it, and he and his cat got a happy ending. Not me, but my sister chose our cat over her boyfriend of four months. He was furious when she dumped him and called her an idiot, picking a dirty flea bag over him. Cat was not a dirty flea bag, he just hated pets and wanted to try and control my sister. I was relieved when she dumped him. I never got good vibes from him. Not my story, but my friend. His GF forced him to choose between her or dog. That dog was remaining momentum from his deceased mother. And of course, he instantly dumped his girlfriend. His girlfriend went from face full with expectations to beat red, full of shame and anger and smashed his house windows when she left his house. I remember him saying my diabetic cat needed to go so he could get a dog. We weren't even living together. I looked him dead in the eyes and said, my cat will outlive this relationship. Considering she was really sick at the time, he said it was unlikely and stormed off. We broke up six years ago and my cat's still going strong. My ex asked me if she thought my dog liked me or her more and I said me. She got genuinely mad and told me I'm supposed to just lie to her. Didn't last long. Why do people want to be lied to? Doesn't make any sense. Not exactly what you asked for, but I knew a couple that had to break up because she was badly allergic to his elderly dog. They were both understanding of the situation and there was no animosity. They ended up getting back together after the dog had passed away and they're now very happy. Well, you love to see a good ending. You have to choose one person from all of human history to <laughs> their pants at a time so as to change the course of history as much as possible. Who would you choose? When and why? The guy who <laughs> invented ants? No, he'd give up. He'd give up on pants. Mar <laughs> Marilyn Monroe during her blowy vent photo. True fact, Australian Prime Minister Robert Menzies almost shat his pants during the talks with Nassar on the Suez Canal in 1956. He had to stop talks, which led to a considerable loss of British influence in the region. Perfect example. Abraham Lincoln shits his pants 10 seconds before being assassinated, causing him to turn around and go change and thwarting John Wilkes Booth. Neil Armstrong for the history of lols. Elon, exactly two seconds. <laughs> Elon, exactly two seconds after breaking the Cybertruck window. Guys, please stop choosing me. I'm so sick of doing laundry. What did a teacher do that made you automatically gain respect for them? I had a physical education teacher who organized basketball, volleyball, handball, and football tournaments, organized Olympic games for the local kids, and taught us dancing on weekends. On his own, just for us kids, because we lived in a remote place without many activities and things going on. He was more than a simple teacher. I remember my fifth grade teacher had every student circle one book from the Scholastic Book Fair flyer. When the day came for the fair, if you didn't go to the library to purchase that book for yourself, she would buy it with her own money and make sure every student got to take a book home. I wouldn't have had any books of my own if it weren't for her. Not take my sh**. I was a pretty decent writer in school, able to pop stuff out pretty quickly, and that was superficial but sounded good. The first time I had a teacher hand my work back 
pointing out that I managed to compellingly fail to say anything was sort of a slap in the face that I didn't realize I needed. I had a professor once state she doesn't believe in trick questions. Students trick themselves up enough without the professor helping that along. She never did put trick questions. It was the professor, but she said she wasn't going to have a textbook for the class. Basically, she didn't respect text representatives trying to take the pharma approach to force kids to buy an $170 access code. Instant respect. You just had to show up to the lectures and she'd teach you what you needed to know. One of those extra teachers that walk around during the class making sure everyone is doing their work. One day, he walked up to me and started talking to me about Red Dead Redemption and Spider-Man. What was sexy 10 years ago, but isn't now? 10 years ago, if your girl said, does my butt look big in this? You said no. When I was in high school, there was one year where every girl at my school suddenly started wearing a feather in their hair. Did anyone else experience this or was my high school weird? Concealer lips, orange foundation, and heavy-handed black eyeliner. Using the word sexy in marketing digital teams to describe sleek interfaces or products. I feel like they still do that. The hair bump poof for girls made popular by Jersey Shore. Always thought it looked trashy, but it seemed like everyone did it. That and too much bronzer. Fake tan? I think every time I go out, not so often, but anyways, I seem to see less and less orange ladies. Apple bottom jeans. The ones without any back pockets. Everyone in high school would wear these. Searching boobs on Google Images. Yeah, now it just pops up with Drake and Josh. Just realized I was about to list something from the 90s. How did I get so old? FML. If you had the entire world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you say? Just start counting down from 30 and see what happens. Is it recording already? Yes? Oh, okay. So, dear world, I just want- Could you please direct your attention to someone else? I am extremely uncomfortable right now. Say I'm not mad, just disappointed, then stare into the sunset. Does anyone know where my dad is? Inaudible. And that's all I have to say about that. Will the owner of a black BMW parked in a handicapped spot please move your vehicle or it will be towed? I'm God. Here is my Venmo. Not saying it will help your chances of eternal salvation, but I mean, can't hurt them. What's your favorite angry song? Bulls on Parade. Yes. Yes. Bulls on Parade by Rage Against the Machine, but also the Denzel Curry version. Both are great. Oh, Fortuna by Carl Orff. Orff? Blood and Thunder by Mastodon. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Minus the clapping. Oh, buddy. Do you want to talk? Redneck. Lamb of God. Was my go-to I Hate My Parents song as a teenager. Still by Ghetto Boys. Thanks, Office Space. Now as an older white dude working in an office, I cranked the song in my car after any particularly bad day. Powers That Be by Death Grips. One of the most- Most of the songs on Jenny Death helped me express frustration. Psst, psst, as well. Queens of the Stone Age. You think I ain't worth a dollar, but I feel like a millionaire. It's full on blood pumpingly aggressive from the start, and that little fake ending before it kicks right back in is just so perfect. What's that one product that is completely worth your money? Prescription sunglasses. Absolutely. 10 foot charger for your phone. I have one of those. A good undersink home toolkit if you don't have one already. I can say as a newly married 20 something, it was the most useful gift my father-in-law got me. A good and comfortable chair to your desk, especially when you plan to sit there for a lot of studying or if your job requires you to sit. It will spare you a lot of back pain. The right mattress can completely change your life. Everything in life can be affected by your sleep quality. I'd say start there. A Roomba. Haven't swept in two years. 730 days my broom has not come from the side of the fridge. He probably misses me. I'm gonna go check up on him. Good pair of shoes. An electric tire inflator for $29.95. So convenient to add air to the tires where you live rather than going to gas station air pumps, especially in winter weather. As a homeowner, I can't say it enough, a wet dry vacuum. After seeing how many people keep <laughs> stored in 10 year old random cardboard boxes in their garage or laundry room, I'm gonna say storage tubs. They are hardly expensive, uniform in size, stack well, and aren't going to deteriorate if they get a bit wet. What's a fun little fact about yourself? I have mastered moving my eyes independently because when I was six, a Discovery Channel video of a chameleon told me I couldn't do it. I have perfect vision in my left eye, but horrible vision in my right eye. Sounds like you need some prescription sunglasses. My hair, eyebrows, and beard are all naturally different colors. My hair is blonde, eyebrows dark brown, and my beard ginger. Also, for anyone interested, my pubes are also ginger. I was born in 2000, 10th of October, 1010 in the morning. I even came to the front page on newspaper about it in 2010. Right, because you're turn, turn 10, yeah. I can plug my nose with my lips. It's a watertight seal, so I use it when I swim, which means I look ridiculous while swimming. I have a tooth in the roof of my mouth. I had no idea it was there until I was 17 and my dentist was baffled. They refused to remove it because they say it's not hurting me. I write in my journal every day since 2009, so I have an account of all my thoughts since the past 10 years, and I can see how I grew as a person since I was 15. Sometimes I cringe when I read something back then. I am one of a few thousand people who have ever actually walked around at the geographic North Pole. I can cry or throw up on command. Edited to say or instead of and, too many complaints about wording. Every time I get out of the shower and put on my new underwear, I slap my butt cheeks. What are some things that sound like compliments but are actually insults? My biology teacher in high school used to love telling people, I don't care what anyone else says. You're all right. My French sister-in-law said to me at a family get-together, your skin is so smooth. You hardly have any wrinkles. That's the advantage of being overweight. My dad thinks babies are inherently ugly, so when people show him baby pics or whatever, he's just like, now that's a baby. A male friend of my sister once told her, you know, if you 
had half a brain, you'd be dangerous. That was near 30 years ago, and she still can't figure out if it was an insult or a compliment. Before I retired, I was once asked by our HR department to write a non-lawsuit producing reference for a former employee of mine that I had a pretty low opinion of. I wrote that they always met my expectations. You so beautiful that you could be a part-time model. Anything involving the word brave. You are such an adventurous dresser. I wish I was brave like that. And with that, that's all the posts I have. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.